Welcome. My name is Peter Strong. I'm a professional psychotherapist based in Colorado and I offer uh, psychotherapy via Skype um, worldwide, including North America, uh, Western Europe and as far away as Japan. So I'm often asked what is Skype therapy? Well really Skype therapy simply refers to psychotherapy that's offered via Skype, that's all. It could be any kind of uh, psychotherapy um, that works well um, online. Uh, we use Skype because Skype allows you to see each other and that has proven to be effective uh, and essential for uh, good psychotherapy. You must see each other uh, to be able to communicate effectively. So that's why we use Skype, but we can also use FaceTime or Zoom or other uh, internet protocols as well. But Skype is very convenient, it's very easy to um, install and works very well. Uh, as long as you have a good internet connection, um, it's perfectly satisfactory. So that's Skype therapy. It's simply psychotherapy delivered via Skype. Now, I specialize in mindfulness therapy, which uh, I offer online via Skype. I find it to be extremely effective um, for managing anxiety and depression and most other emotional problems that uh, you may be struggling with. I work a lot with agoraphobia, uh, helping people uh, overcome their anxiety and panic attacks so they can leave home. Um, obviously there are lots of benefits to uh, online therapy. It, convenience is certainly a, a big factor but for many people it's just not possible to leave home uh, because of the severity of their anxiety or in other cases uh, it's just not convenient to leave home uh, because uh, you may be caring for young children or um, an elderly relative or uh, or you have a difficulty with driving. I work a lot with driving anxiety, that's quite, quite popular and mindfulness therapy is very effective for for driving anxiety and other anxiety disorders. So um, if you're interested in learning more about Skype therapy and, and doing therapy sessions over Skype, then please go to my website. Please email me if you have any questions. Uh, I'd be happy to explain to you what I will be teaching you during mindfulness-based Skype therapy. Um, basically, the, the the whole focus of mindfulness therapy is to teach you how to overcome those patterns of reactivity, reactive thinking that keeps you stuck in a cycle of anxiety or depression or addiction. Um, we have to change our relationship to thoughts. That's a very important part of mindfulness therapy. And I will train you in how to do this. I will show you uh, in detail how to do this. We will practice during sessions together um, so that you can develop uh, good practical methods that you can practice yourself between sessions. So the primary uh, strategy that we use during mindfulness therapy is mindfulness meditation. Uh, the style of meditation that I teach is uh, quite different than what may be um, familiar for you. It's really a way of meditating on the mind. It's changing your relationship to your thoughts and emotions. So we do that by meditating on our thoughts and emotions. Even painful thoughts and painful emotions, we must make them uh, a focus of our meditation. 
if you try to escape uh, painful emotions or intrusive thoughts, you will simply feed them and make them worse. So meditation provides a very systematic and focused way of developing a good quality relationship with your emotions and thoughts, with your mind. And this is essential if you want to overcome anxiety or depression. Uh, you have to form a different kind of relationship with your thoughts and emotions. You have to break out of that habit of becoming uh, reactively identified with your emotions, becoming overwhelmed by anxiety or depression. Uh, you have to be able to train to be the observer, seeing this content of the mind, instead of becoming uh, consumed by it. Training to be the observer is a central part of mindfulness meditation. Um, when you can really develop that ability to see your emotions and thoughts, or memories, or traumas, clearly, without becoming consumed by them, uh, that will set the right conditions that allow those uh, forms of emotional suffering to heal. So that's another primary goal of mindfulness therapy, is about healing. We are learning to heal our anxiety or depression. We're learning to uh, resolve those habits that uh, cause our anxiety and depression. Um, the goal is liberation from anxiety or depression or any other form of emotional suffering. Um, so learning to see your thoughts objectively, developing objective consciousness is really, really important. Uh, and then also exploring the uh, structure of your emotions and that is primarily a process of working with the imagery of your emotions. The way that you see anxiety or fear or depression or anger uh, or any other emotion is really really important. That internal imagery is what actually uh, causes that emotion to take form so we want to look at its imagery. We want to look at the color of the emotion. Color mm -hmm. is a part of its imagery. And color is required to produce that particular image. So for example, if it's depression, the chances are that it will have a dark color. It will be black or sometimes purple. Uh, that color is part of what creates that depression. So uh, color is very important. Also, the size of the emotion. If you find an emotion to be really overpowering, uh, such as a panic attack, then the chances are that that emotion will be very large. The imagery of the emotion will be very large. That is a necessary component that causes uh, the emotion to be overpowering. The other way of explaining this is that it cannot be overpowering if the emotional imagery is very small. Uh, so looking at the imagery it provides very practical ways of helping the emotion heal because when an emotion heals, it will uh, change its own imagery. That is the psychological process of healing. That's how emotions heal. Um, when an emotion ceases to be overpowering, it's because it, it has become very small in size. Um, so it can no longer be overpowering. So we can speed up that process during our meditation where when we are investigating the structure of our emotions we can speed up that process of healing by deliberately uh, changing the imagery of the emotion we can 
through trial and error, find what changes best help that emotion heal. So working with imagery is a big part of mindfulness therapy as I have developed it um, over the years. And it's very, very effective. Um, it's, it, it's really quite essential if you're working with anxiety. You have to work with the imagery of that anxiety. Um, so panic attacks is a classic example. The uh, fear reaction is uh, formed around very large uh, internal imagery that is typically overpowering, it's overwhelming, it's, its position is an indicator of its power, it's too high in our visual field, so that's why it is overpowering. So when we're working with panic attack anxiety, this very intense form of anxiety, we work on changing its imagery and we work on changing the imagery of ourselves as the observer. So we make ourselves bigger than the anxiety and we make the anxiety imagery smaller. We often work on changing its position, moving it further away and moving it from that very high position, uh, perhaps at head level, moving it to a lower level, perhaps putting it on the ground, making it very, very small. These are all changes that facilitate the healing of uh, anxiety. We might look at its color and help that color change, either by deliberately changing the color or uh, taking the emotion and putting it into a different environment where the colors are different. That can be very effective. So there's lots of ways we can interact with our imagery to help emotions heal. But perhaps the primary, most important thing we're doing during our med meditation uh, sessions is changing the relationship where we become the observer, observing the emotion that essentially liberates us from that emotion. So we become the observer instead of becoming the emotion. And that's a, a critical part of um, overcoming emotional reactivity. We, we learn to become bigger than the emotion, um, and we learn to develop a compassionate relationship to the emotion. Um, this is a very important principle that greatly accelerates healing. When you can develop a compassionate relationship with your emotional suffering, with the emotions themselves, with the imagery itself, when you can develop a compassionate relationship that's based on non-reactivity, but based on friendliness and a genuine interest in helping that emotion heal, that is compassion. Uh, when you can do that, you will accelerate the rate of healing dramatically. And that uh, is a very big part of mindfulness training. It's learning to cultivate and reinforce and strengthen that relationship bet between your true self, the observer, and the emotion itself. So that is a very important uh, inner relationship that we build up. It's very much the equivalent of building up, uh, building a relationship between a parent and a child. In order for the child to grow up in a healthy way and to resolve its suffering, it has to develop a strong relationship with its parent. And that relationship, it becomes the foundation for the child as it develops its own inner parent, if you like, its own inner true self that can heal its own suffering. So developing this internal compassionate relationship 
is an essential part of the healing process. So we work on developing an objective relationship that's non-reactive. We look at the imagery of the emotion and we develop a relationship based on compassion. These are the three main areas that we work on. And this approach is very effective. Most people see dramatic changes after the first three or four sessions with me. Once you start applying these, these um, mindfulness-based methods. So if you'd like to get started with me and you would like to schedule some Skype therapy sessions, then please contact me and uh, let's find a time that works for you and we can get started. Even after that very first session, you'll, you'll see some dramatic improvements. So Skype therapy is a very exciting way of getting access to uh, different kinds of psychotherapy, uh, including the mindfulness therapy methods that I have developed. So if you'd like to uh, schedule a Skype therapy session, please go to my website and let's schedule one now. Thank you.